Right, this is my Chinese mini lathe headstock completely stripped down. Um, over the last few months it's developed a fault and um, I thought I'd show this in this video. So if any of you get the same fault, you'll be able to identify the problem. Um, what it was, the high and low gear, um, when it was running, the lathe was running, uh, was jumping out of gear. And all that it was, was this um, selector part here. This is the handle that goes on the back of the Chinese mini lathe. And this is the selector device that goes in between the gears. And what it was, was um, there's a tiny grub screw in there with a slot. And that had worked loose over time. So that when it was changed into high or low gear, this was obviously turning on this spindle and allowing it to jump out of gear. So it's quite a pain in the neck having to strip the whole lathe down just for such a small fault. Um, but that's how it is. Um, to overcome this fault, you remove the um, slotted grub screw and change it for a stainless steel allen bolt um, cut to length uh, with a point on the end which goes into the indent and obviously with the allen bolt you can get a lot more torque on the um, screw with the allen key and do it up very tight so that it cannot come loose again and there's enough room in the lathe um, to allow you to do this Now I converted my lathe to tapered roller bearings back in 2015 and also the metal gears. And I um, thoroughly greased those gears up obviously um, at that time and put like a molly slip coating on these gears. Um, but when I took the headstock apart I noticed that these were dry again. And having this um, stripped down at this time has allowed me to do a modification which I've been longing to do for some time. Um, a modification which I don't think anyone else has done before on a Chinese mini lathe. And that is these two inspection oiling ports on the top here. Now I carefully um, marked out the um, headstock with a square and a pan when the gears were in here to see um, exactly the positions where those um, holes would go over the top of each gear high and low and the gear on the top is on the spindle obviously and that one's um, in fixed position so you can actually take out the lower gear assembly and line that up and then I just simply put this on the um, bench drill, um, drilled it for 1 8 BSP and then tapped it right through. And then I made two um, small plugs, 1 8 BSP with a um, doughty seal on those. There's an O-ring under those seals which stops the um, doughty seal from falling off and those will obviously screw in to cover the holes and stop any dirt going down in there. So to get this modification dead right is very important and I've obviously worked out the positions of the holes and um, this is the front of the headstock and from this front face here to the center of the hole um, should be a minimum of 40 millimeter and from the back face to the center of the hole a minimum of 35 millimeter And obviously you have to remove the spindle and all the gearing from the headstock. Um, obviously when you're drilling through there'll be a lot of swarf dropping in. But also the gears are very close to the top of the headstock. And if you try to do it with them in situ um, you'd actually damage the gears. 
So that's what it looks like inside the um, housing. You can see that it's very close to the uh, casting for where the bearing goes, um, but obviously not in a position that will actually weaken it. And like I say, those are the minimum um, millimeter to center measurements you can have. But being a nice um, size hole, uh, this one here is directly over the back gear. This one goes over half of the uh, front gear. And like I said, it's a nice size inspection hole. You can clearly see the gears, and I'll show you that later. And you can clearly um, and easily oil them while the machine's running and ensure that they don't dry out again. And while I had it stripped down, I also made myself a deluxe handle out of stainless steel and brass, a much longer handle and longer standoff from the back of the headstock so I can see it and um, reach for it clearly and easily. And um, I think this one's much better suited to the lathe. And I'll show you how um, I got the indents uh, in the correct position when I've actually assembled the headstock. Now if you've ever done this job and taken a spindle out from the mini lathe headstock you'll know that reassembly can be quite difficult. You've got to uh, work through the um, underside of the headstock to line everything up as you're pushing the spindle through um, to get the gear keyways on the um, key here. And another modification I've done is I've put an indent above each keyway on the gears and um, filled that with red paint. And when I'm putting the spindle through, I can actually slide it through and get a good visual and line up the um, keyway slots much easier. Now I'm not going to show the reassembly because it's too messy with grease and too time consuming. So there's the spindle and all the gears back in the headstock. Um, it only took a few minutes because I've got the tapered roller bearings and it's easy to fit. Um, particularly with my markers it was easy to line up on the um, keyways. Um, if you have the older bearing set, obviously you have to use a press to fit it in. So um, if you have a chance of getting a mini lathe, try and choose one with tapered roller bearings or fit them yourself. And also choose ones with the metal gears in the headstock. So to fit a new handle and get these um, indents in the right place, um, you actually have to put the selector in between the gears, push the shaft of the handle through and imagine it hasn't got any um, indents on there already um, when it's pointing straight down you hold that one and use a transfer punch in this hole here and then you take it out and you can put it on the bench drill and I used a center drill and then I used a um, ball nosed cutter. After that one's done you put it back in and you can fit the allen bolt and that one's cut to length so it screws down nicely into that indent but it's below the surface of the um, underside here. And you can do that one up nice and tight so it actually won't work loose again. And then you move the selector into the high gear position and you use a transfer punch in this hole here. This is where the ball bearing goes and the spring. So you use the transfer punch in that one in the high gear selection and then switch it to the low gear selection and use the transfer punch again. 
and then you can actually take it out again put it in the vise and do the centre drill and the ball nose cutter um, for the indents also I don't know whether you noticed but on the gear selector um, when you take it out always put it back in the same position that it came out now I've put a little notch on this side and on this side here so it goes back in exactly the same position in the headstock and that's because you'll find that in another position it can be turned around the other way um, so that the blade goes the other way round and you'll find that when it selects the um, gear it may not mesh um, fully onto one side so you must keep it in the same position and that's what the um, handle looks like with the indents and then uh, that's how it goes onto the headstock and there is absolutely no need to use a grub screw in this um, threaded part here you just cannot get them tight enough um, they're too small and the slots too small and you have to use a small screwdriver and like I said the allen bolt does that up nice and tight then the ball drops into the hole and then the spring and then I've cut a um, allen bolt to length or a grub screw to length and um, the other one was shorter and that had a tendency of um, working its way loose after a period of time so I've actually cut this one to length so that when it screws down on the spring and it's just below this undersized surface here so it doesn't clash with the bed of the lathe um, it's actually at the right tension so that works nice nice and smooth and very positive so I'm very pleased with this repair and upgrade and I'm also very pleased with these inspection and oiling ports I reckon with an angled spout on an oiler I can actually get oil onto the bearings as well as the gears so it's a great thing to have and just taking off the um, caps there and looking in you can see immediately whether those um, gears are dry and now that one's ready to go back on the machine But just before I fit it back on the lathe, I'd just like to show you this um, gear at the back here. And this is the one that goes um, to the motor assembly, the drive um, gear. And this comes as part of a set. It's called an XL speed reduction set um, from the USA for the Chinese mini lathe. And it consists of this aluminium gear here an aluminium gear that goes on the motor shaft and a new standard size belt and it reduces the gears or reduces the speed um, by 50% giving you a lower um, low speed and very high torque for drilling and this one's great like I said it's got a standard size belt which you can actually buy very cheaply from many different eBay suppliers um, the old Chinese mini lathe one that goes on the plastic um, gear um, is a non-standard belt which you have to buy from like Chinese mini lathe suppliers so this one's great to have and I found it completely unnecessary to have such high speeds on a mini lathe and having the extra torque is really good so that's the lathe all back together again I've just got to get a new um, speed sensor cable 
Um, you can get these from Amadeo, they're not too expensive. Um, one of the actual sensors has dropped off there, so I haven't got any digital readout at the moment. And I've got a nice um, view of the handle now, so I don't have to reach over the back. And it all sounds lovely and smooth. and then change to low and with the 50% um, reduction gear, the XL gear on the back you can see how slow I can actually go now with this RPM plus I've got very good torque on that you can hear the compensator kicking in on there and you cannot actually stop that chuck. So I'm very pleased with that job. And this is the view directly over the oiling ports. You can see how close the gear is to the top of the headstock. And I've got a nice view of each gear so that it'll be easy to see whether they're dry or not and easy to oil So thanks for watching and see you next time.